Hello everyone and welcome back to Shanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. Today's video is another episode of my book review, Black on Red, My 44 Years Inside the Soviet Union by Robert Robinson. This is episode number 23 and if you're new to my channel, I have a separate playlist where all those videos are located, link will be below in the comment section. I believe today's story is quite interesting and important because it may give you some insights of why socialist economy was keep on failing. So here Robert Robertson talking about another black American friend of his, John Sutton, who was born in 1897. Sutton had studied at the Tuskegee Institute, Drake University, the Massachusetts Agricultural College, now part of University of Massachusetts, and had a master's degree from Columbia University. Very impressive list. Early in 1930, the Soviet Union invited George Washington Carver of Tuskegee Institute to help them develop their agricultural industry. Rather than going himself, he recommended Sutton, who then arrived in Moscow in 1932 as one of a group of eight black American specialists in agriculture, poultry, and cotton. From Moscow, they joined to Central Asia and other parts of the Soviet Union to advise Soviet farmers, well, advise Soviet collective farm managers on ways to improve crop and poultry production. And Robert continues, Sutton stayed in the Soviet Union, and I looked up, he had not just stayed in the Soviet Union, right away in 1932 he married a Russian lady, and in the mid-30s he invented a sturdy new type of rope made from rice straw, a development that enabled the Soviets to establish a new industry. Before Sutton's invention, Soviet rope was weak and often broke apart. But because of his work, Russia could stop importing jute and hemp and became a major exporter of spring twine. I asked Sutton what he received for his invention. He smiled and said, My organization gave me a couple of hundred rubles, which was not much money. One day after Sutton had returned temporarily to Moscow from Uzbek Republic in Central Asia, so guy was uh, traveling all over the Soviet Union, I asked him what life was like for him professionally. To tell you the truth, Bob, he replied, life in Uzbekia, that should be Uzbekistan, is far more far from simple. I meet resistance every step of the way when I try to introduce new methods of technology. People are so accustomed to doing things the old way, they really do not want to change. Our efforts also suffer from a great shortage of equipment. I talked to my boss, he said. I have written to Moscow. I received promises from everywhere that the situation will be looked into, but nothing has changed. I just give in and do the job the way the people want it done and keep my innovations to myself. But then I feel guilty because the result is just the opposite of what I was brought here to do. But how is it for you in the factory? And now Robert's turn. <laughs> Resistance to change is not as great or as direct as it was when I first arrived, I told him. My proposals are rejected, ignored, or accepted. But then I am not allowed to implement them. I solve the problem by working after hours and then inviting the superintendent, the chief engineer, the department foreman, the party secretary, to a demonstration of how a job can be done more efficiently and in less time. At that point, with all of them there, they cannot very well sabotage the already completed projects. You make it sound almost easy, he laughed. Well, as we both know, it's not easy. There is still a great deal of red tape, but this usually works for me. Sutton said he might try a similar strategy when he returned to Central Asia. And here I need to pause and mention another book by Zara Witkin. The book is called An American Engineer in Stalin's Russia. And I'm just going to read one of the reviews because it's pretty much what I was thinking. This story demonstrates the enterprise-crushing power of sloth, greed, and envy. If I had to sum up a good takeaway theme, it would be the Seven Deadly Sins over Idealism in Three Rounds by TKO. I'm not sure what TKO means. These fundamental human personality attributes, more than anything else, derailed the Second Russian Revolution from the top. The paranoid Stalin and his apparently psychopathic inner circle, to the middle, 
pure self-interested bureaucrats, to the bottom, workers' innovations and desire to contribute to the common good being squashed by senseless decrees, programs and pogroms. What a train wreck. Witkin seemed to be a strong idealist. He actually came to the Soviet Union to help uh, building socialism, trying to come to grips with the social milieu ruled by the anti-idealistic norms. Poor guy. A brilliant engineer in mind, unable to grasp the most basic human motivations in play around him, lost his ideal society, his dream love to a world that doesn't believe in dreams or ideals. And then he died. So yeah, I strongly recommend that book too. It's available on Amazon. It's not cheap, around $50 per book, but it's also available online for free. I will provide the link below in the comment section. But that's an amazing story because Guy was kind of in the upper level of management. He was in planning in Moscow for quite a few years until he got delusioned and went back to America. And just to finish the story of John Sutton. So, as I mentioned, uh, he got married in the Soviet Union in 1932. In 1933, he was promoted to have his own uh, laboratory, so that was a big deal. In 1938, he was expelled um, from the Soviet Union. So that's he got lucky, because that's what the purchase started in 1937, one year prior. And he died in the United States in 1978. And then Robert Roberts, I'm talking about, another guy, George Tynes, uh, was an agriculturist with a degree from... Wilbur Forest University. He was an expert in poultry and fish husbandry, but couldn't find a work in his field in the States, so he taught uh, English in a Negro school in the South and later worked in New York. He was recruited among 14 other blacks by a trade union activist and arrived in Moscow in 1932. In all the years he spent in the Soviet poultry and fish industry, Tynes never received a promotion even though he was an exemplary worker who usually knew more than his superiors. Because of him, the Soviet poultry exhibition won first prize in an international fair held in Belgium in the mid-50s. However, it was his supervisor who received the medals and was acclaimed as industrial hero in a Soviet newspaper in radio accounts. Tynes was simply listed in the fair's program as a technician. Although he had become a Soviet citizen, he was a black, non-native, and Kremlin was obsessed with impressing the world with the superiority of the Russia's own people. Once back in Moscow, George was given two of the medals awarded in the competition. Even though he was denied full recognition for his efforts, Tynes was nevertheless proud of his medals and wore them whenever he came into Moscow. He particularly enjoyed seeing the startled reaction of many Russians who were unprepared to see evidence of black men succeeding professionally in Russia. So over and over again we see the same motif, same theme, that although there was no racism in the Soviet Union, there was plenty of racism in the Soviet Union. It wasn't on a, like a state level, not official, like it was the United States, you know, bathrooms only for blacks you know, buses only for blacks or whites. It was all hidden, but still it was in play because it was important for the Kremlin to show superiority of its own people, not the people who came from other countries, especially black people. And once again, I strongly recommend a Zara Witkin book. I found it surprisingly good. When I found out about originally, I was kind of skeptical because there's a love story going on, which is really like a cheesy Hollywoody story, but it's real. He fell in love with the uh, Soviet actress, and she was one of the main reasons he decided to move to the Soviet Union. So, good book. I strongly recommend. Zara Witkin, an American engineer in Stalin's Russia. Okay, my friends, uh, this is the end of episode number 23. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please don't forget to like it. Uh, post the comment and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.